Hey everybody, today we're going to take another look at which states had the fairest congressional maps, but this time it's going to be based on the results for president. Now in the past, because these are the congressional maps, I compared the data to the statewide popular vote for the U.S. House. But because sometimes that data can be skewed because there's no major party opposition or two Democrats or two Republicans in the general election, this should make it a little bit more simple and just compare to the presidential data. And next week, we'll do the final calculation to weight this data according to the population size. So I know there's going to be some suggestions out there that say I should have did it a different way. If you want to do it a different way, have at it, but this is the way that I'm going to do it. So let's go through this spreadsheet. We've got a lot of data here. The left column are the states. Then we've got the number of U.S. House congressional districts. Then instead of the U.S. House statewide popular vote in the previous videos, these are the presidential percentages. We've got the Dems, then the Republicans. Then we've got the number of congressional districts won by each party. Then we've got those two numbers expressed in terms of a percentage. Then we've got the fair number of congressional districts that each side should have won if it perfectly correlates to the presidential results. Then the next two columns are going to be the difference between the number of districts won and the two previous columns. Then the second to last column is the district bias number. That's going to be the difference between the two previous columns divided by two. And the last column on the right, that's the percent of the previous column compared to the number of congressional districts in the state. You could also look at it in terms of how much of the statewide population lives in that bias amount of districts. There's also shading in this column. Anything between zero and four tenths of one seat is going to be in green. Half a seat to 0 0.9 are going to be shaded lightly. One to 1.9 are going to be the medium colors and the darkest colors are going to be a bias of two seats or more. So with all that said, this should give us a pretty good idea of which maps were more fair and which ones were more biased. Now, obviously, there is some crossover vote between president and the U.S. House, and there's also going to be a little bit of third party vote out there. But if you're looking to take the presidential vote and have that trickle down into the U.S. House, that's what this data is going to show us. And one last thing to mention is it seems like every time I double check the data, a few of the numbers have changed since I last took a look at these and some of them are also off depending on the source it's not that many and it's unfortunate to see but keep that in mind now let's go through the first state we've got alabama they've got seven congressional districts for president kamala harris put up 34.1 donald trump won the state with 64.6 of the seven congressional districts in the u.s house democrats won two of them republicans five those two districts won by the dems totaled 28.6 percent of the seven districts for the republicans they're five districts districts total 71.4 but if harris's statewide vote of 34.1 perfectly translated into the u.s house the dems would have 2.4 districts and on the other side trump's 64.6 would give the republicans four and a half seats that means the democrats are coming up short by four tenths of a seat and the republicans are ahead by a half a seat that means the total bias here is four tenths of a seat that would technically be in favor of the republicans but because it's less than half a seat that's going to be a pretty good map. So that's going to be in green. And that four tenths of a C would be about 6.2% of the entire congressional map. So a pretty good map here in Alabama, seven districts, five red, two blue. It used to be six to one. That was not a great map, but this one so far is looking pretty good. So that's how this table works. So before we get to the map, let's quickly go through the rest of these states. In Arizona, their bias comes out to 1.2 seats in favor of the Republicans. In Arkansas, Democrats actually have zero seats out of the four districts. If it went the same way as the presidential vote, Republicans are coming out with a 1.4 seat moderate advantage. California, it's the most populous state. They've got the most number of House seats, 52. Dems won 43 out of those 52 seats. That's more than 82%. But Harris was under 59% for president. This easily comes out to the biggest advantage out of any state. It's going to be a massive 11.7 seat advantage for the Dems. In Colorado, we've got another pretty good map here, only off by another four-tenths of a seat. Connecticut has a notable bias in favor of the Dems of 2.1. Delaware has only one congressional district, so we can move on to Florida. They've got a significant Republican bias of 4.2 seats. Georgia, same direction, but much less at 1.8. Hawaii, only two seats there, both of them held by Dems. Not a lot you can do 
there, but it does come out to an eight-tenths of a seat advantage for the Dems. Idaho is similar in the other direction at six-tenths of one seat. Illinois has a heavy-duty bias for the Dems at 4.6. Now we've got some maps that favor the Republicans. Indiana, 1.6. Iowa, 1.7. Kansas, 0.7 and Kentucky, 1.1. Louisiana, great map there. Just a bias of three-tenths of a seat. In Maine, that's going to favor the Dems by nine-tenths of a seat. Also in that direction, we've got Maryland at a bigger 1.9, and Massachusetts an even bigger 3.4. There, Republicans have zero out of the nine seats. But in Michigan, we've got a great map, just a bias of four-tenths. Minnesota is going to be tied for the best map in the country. They've got eight districts, four held by each side. Harris winning that state just by a little over 3%. That's almost a perfect overlap, just a two-tenths of a seat bias. Mississippi is going to have a half a seat bias in favor of the Republicans. Missouri is also going to favor the GOP by 1.3. Montana has an eight-tenths of a seat bias for the Republicans. Nebraska also red by 1.2. Now we've got some biases for the Dems. Nevada, 1.1. New Hampshire, 1. New Jersey, 2.6. New Mexico, 1.4. And New York is up there at 4.4. Now we're going to go in the other direction. We've got red state biases in North Carolina at 2.8, Ohio 1.7, and Oklahoma 1.6. Oregon has the same bias, but in favor of the Dems 1.6. Pennsylvania is going to be a moderate GOP bias at 1.4. Rhode Island in favor of the Dems at 0.9. South Carolina is going to go toward the GOP at 1.9. Then we've got Tennessee that has a notable bias for the Republicans at 2.2 seats. Then it's Texas at another seat more than that at 3.4. Utah is about half that at 1.6. Then we've got Virginia, which is also tied for Minnesota with the least biased map. That number is just going to be one-fifth of a seat. In Washington, their bias is going to be for the Dems at 2.1. West Virginia, it's going to be red at 0.6. And Wisconsin, that has a Republican bias of an even two seats. So those are all of the states. But if we try to apply it nationally, again with the presidential vote, it's actually not too bad. It's just an eight-tenths of a seat bias in favor of the Dems. So that's all the data. But if you're curious about the total number of seats added up for each side, excluding the states shaded in green, the total Dem bias is going to be 40.4 seats. For the Republicans, it's just under that at 37.1. So a ton of data there. But if you want to help visualize it, let's take it all. Let's put it on a map. Here it is. We've got the same kind of shading. Three levels for each side. The darker states are the more biased states of at least two seats. The green states are going to be the more balanced states of under a half a seat bias. So what are the takeaways here? Well, this is similar to the videos I did back in January that used the statewide popular vote for the U.S. House. That, I think, is a more one-to-one -one comparison. However, you do run into problems with unopposed candidates in the general election. Sometimes you got two Dems, sometimes two Republicans. Sometimes there's a third-party candidate. So this should theoretically show us what the highest level of turnout would be that's going to be for president and how that would look if it perfectly correlated into the U.S. House. Now, obviously, everything doesn't have to be a perfect one-to-one -one correlation. Candidate quality matters. Geography also matters. And sometimes there's crossover vote. Nothing is going to be perfect. But this is what I'm going to use if I want to find out which states have fair maps. It's not the be-all, end-all, but it does give you a good starting point. So we can see what the best states are on a glance. It's Colorado, Minnesota, Michigan, Virginia, Alabama, and Louisiana. Pretty good mix of states there, not much to add. But what about on the other end? What are the worst states? Well, it's easily California. They've got the most number of seats. No matter how you slice it, Republicans clearly coming up short there in terms of how much Republican vote is in that state. Dems also doing heavy damage again in Illinois, New York, Massachusetts. There's a few other ones like Washington, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The biggest Republican culprits are going to be Texas and Florida. Also, Tennessee and North Carolina are right behind, followed by Wisconsin. Those all have a bias of at least two or more seats. Once you get over two seats like that, I think it's a pretty good indication that the map might not really be all that fair. The higher you go, the more egregious it's going to be. And given California has the most number of people, that state is easily way out in front of every other state by at least double. I know they technically had an independent commission there draw their maps, but I don't usually hear that map getting a lot of attention as being unfair. But when I drill down into the data, every time it comes up at the top. If it were close, I can understand, but it's way out in front. Texas, Florida, Florida, North Carolina, those states usually come up as being unfair. It's easy to say they're not fair, but they're definitely under some of these other maps. Republicans do more damage in the medium population states. Those are going to be the ones that are shaded in the medium red. There you've got a one to two
two-seat advantage across a ton of states. Dems have way less of those, but they make up for it in the heavy population states, California, Illinois, New York. So both sides taking different advantages depending on how you want to look at it. And of course, some of these races are very close in the U.S. House. Just another one or two percent swing could cause a seat to flip and then skew this data. So that's why this is not everything, but it's definitely something. And given it was not a popular vote landslide in one direction or the other, either for president or in the U.S. House, that's why for the most part, I think this 24 data holds up pretty well if you're trying to find out which states have a good or bad map. So with all that said, I don't want to go on too long. You can draw your own conclusions from this data, but let me know in the comments. What do you think about any of this data? Which states do you think are under the radar for having a bad map? And which states do you think don't get enough credit for how good of a map they've got? Let me know what you think down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.